Question number five <clears throat> from the Pure Mathematics um, P4 sample assessment paper from um, International A Level at Excel. Um, in this question, we are asked first of all to find in terms of lin 2 the x coordinate of the point A for this curve, which has the equation given and it tells us that the curve meets the x-axis at the origin and again at the point a and we need to find the coordinates of the point a so when any time you have a function meeting the x-axis what we should realize is that the equation of the x-axis is y equals zero because every point on the x-axis y equals zero so if we were to equate this function to y equals zero okay to um, if we replace the y with 0 and solve, we would find the x values where the function intersects the x-axis. So that's what we must do. We must replace the y with 0. So we have 4x minus x e to the power of a half x is equal to 0. And to solve this equation, what we could do first, we could take out the common factor of x, leaving us with 4 minus, leaving us with a bit neater than that. 4 minus e to the power of a half x is equal to 0. So we have either x equals 0, which we already know in the question because they told us that it, it meets at the origin. And also the other value, which will be the value we need, is where 4 minus e to the power of a half x equals 0. So if I solve this for x, I will find the coordinates of the point Oh, I'll find the you know x value of where it hits the x-axis at a. Okay, so what I can do first is I can rearrange this. I can add e to the power of half x to both sides. We'll leave us with four equals e to the power of half x, which is the same as saying e to the power of half x is equal to four. And to solve this exponential equation, what we can do here is we can take the log to the base of um, the number. Okay, that we're trying to solve this equation for. So for example here, I'm trying to um, find out what x is. So I want to get rid of this um, this base. So what I can do is I can take the log to the base e. In the past, you'd have to take log to the base 10, although um, we, I guess we have the lin button anyway. So we just take log to the base e, which is lin. The lin button means the lin button. It means the log to the base of the natural number. Okay, so if we take log to the base E will end up with, and I'm going to write this step, although it's not necessary, just for those of you who need a bit of a brush up, lin e to the power of a half x is equal to lin 4. So if I take log to the base e of one side, I, may, I must also take log to the base e of the other side, okay, because it's an equation, so that gives me lin 4 on that side. Then I can use the power rule, so I'll just continue over here, I can use the power rule, I can write this as a half x times lin e equals lin 4. Now, we know that the log to the base e of e is 1, okay? And um, the reason for that is the log to the base a of a equals what? This means a to the power of something equals a. Well, it's a to the power of 1 equals a. So anytime you have log to the base of something of itself, it's always going to be equal to 1. So we can just write this as a half x equals lin 4 and therefore x is equal to 2 lin 4. All right, now the question doesn't ask us to express our answer in terms of lin 4, it says in terms of lin 2. So if you look at our answer, we say, okay, we can use a power law again. We can write this as 2 lin 2 squared. 4 can be expressed as 2 squared, and then I can use a power law, 2 times 2 is 4, so you have x equals 4 lin 2. And that's how they wanted us to express it. And they just want the x coordinate of the point A. If they say the coordinates of point A, we'd have to write it in, you know, in this form. We'd put 4 in 2 and 0. But they do not ask us to write the coordinates of the point. They say just write, find out the coordinates, the x coordinate of the point A. Okay, so that's part A done. Now part B says find the integral of x e to the power of half x with respect to x. Okay, now here, um, this is a type of integration which we have to use the parts here because you have x times e to the power of half x. These are two unrelated functions, okay? 
if, for example, this was a half x squared, for example, um, then I could say, ah, it's like, um, you can use the reverse of the chain rule because you have something like f dash of x times f of x of that form. So if that was squared, then, you know, if you differentiate um, x squared, it's going to give you something in terms of just x, which is what we have here. But this is not x squared, so this is not the form that we see. So we cannot use the reverse of the chain rule. So we have to think of another way now. There are two basically unrelated functions. So what we can do is we can use what's called integration by parts. Now for integration by parts, you choose one of them as u and you choose the other one as dv, d, dv dx. So one of them is u, the other one is dv dx. Okay, so you've got to find what du dx is and you've got to find what v is. Now, the one that you chose as you have to differentiate. The one that you chose as dv dx, you have to integrate. Now, it's, our objective is to kind of break this down. So, so you always choose the one that's easy to become something like less complicated as u. Um, and the one that's not such, um, you know, that's, you know, that doesn't break down so easily when you differentiate it as dv dx. And here we can see x is of, of course perfect for u because when you differentiate it becomes 1, which is you know a lot simpler. If I put e to the power of half x here and I differentiate it, I'm going to get 2 times e to the power of um, half x, which gives me more something more complicated. So what I've got to do is um, I'm going to choose this as e to the power of half x. Okay, uh, dv dx is e to the power of half x. Now I have to integrate that. To integrate something, it stays the same. It doesn't change. So e to the power of half x stays as e to the power of half x. When you differentiate or integrate e to the power of something, it doesn't change. However, you have to always look what's inside the function. And here we have to divide by the differential of what's inside the function, which is a half, which therefore gives us 2 e to the power of half x. That is what v is. So now when you are um, doing something in this form and integrating something like this, you use uh, integration by parts. And the formula is actually given in the book. I'll just put it up here because we've got a bit of space there. And I don't actually use the formula. It's basically u dv dx with respect to x is equal to uv minus integral of v du dx. It looks kind of a bit complicated, but it's not really that really that difficult. If you set your work out in the way that I've shown you here, it actually makes it quite easy. You don't have, I don't even look at the formula when I'm doing this. So what I normally do is I just, as I've done here, put my u and my du, my u on the left and my dv dx on my right. Then underneath each of them, I differentiate the u and integrate the dv dx. And I always do, it's going to be this times this. So the integral of x e to the power of a half x with respect to x is going to be x times that, which gives you 2x e to the power of a half x. So let's just multiply these two, minus the integral of these two multiplied. So it's 2 e to the power of a half x times 1. So I can write the 2 out here. I have e to the power of a half x and times 1 with respect to x. And there we have it. So we can now just integrate that part and we're finished. So you got 2x e to the power of a half x minus 2. Now again, if you integrate e to the power of a half x, you're going to get 2 e to the power of a half x, just like we got there. And then don't forget the plus e at the end. So we're simplifying it now. You have 2x e to the power of a half x, that's an e there, minus 4 e to the power of a half x and plus c. So there we have part B done. And now we're going to move on to part C. Okay, don't forget the plus C at the end here, by the way. Okay, now part C, um, this was our answer. We've got 2x e to the power of half x minus 4 e to the power of half x. Let's make sure that that is the same in case I can put it down wrong. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, and we also know that it Cross, crosses the x-axis at 4 lin 2. All right, so now it says the finite region R shown shaded in figure 2 is bounded by the x-axis and the curve with equation y equals 4x minus x e to the power of half x where x is greater than or equal to 0. Find by integration the exact value for the area of R. So we have to basically find
find the integral of this function between the limits of 0 and 4 lin 2 and that will give us the area between the curve and the x-axis. Okay, now be very careful here, you see, because what we integrated was not all of this, it was just this part. Okay, and so this answer here is not the integral of the whole function that we see here, it's just the integral of that part of the function. So you've got to be really careful. That's a little trick that I'm sure a lot of people fell into. They thought we'd integrated the whole of that function, but we hadn't. So here we have 4x e to the power of time minus e to the power of half. 4x minus x times e to the power of half x. We've got to integrate that with respect to x between 0 and 4 lin 2. So this part's already been done. We have that there. To integrate 4x, it's going to be 4x squared over 2. So that's going to give us 4x squared over 2, which is 2x squared, uh, minus what we just found there. So be careful about the minus sign there. See how I'm going to put it in a bracket for now to make it clear. 2x e to the power of a half x minus 4 e to the power of a half x. Now we don't need the plus c anymore because it's a definite integral. The c's will just cancel out. But I have my 0 and my 4 lin 2. So let's just continue down here. Have a bit more space. So now I have to basically just substitute these values in. What I'll do is I'll just tidy this up first so that it's not confusing. So 2x squared minus 2x e to the power of a half x and it's going to be plus, be careful about that, plus 4 e to the power of a half x. And the limits are 4 lin 2 and 0. So let's start putting the limits in. So we're going to put 4 lin 2 instead of x. We have 2 times, we're going to have 4 lin 2 squared minus 2 times 4 lin 2 e to the power of a half times 4 lin 2 and you're going to have plus 4 e to the power of a half 4 lin 2 minus, now be very careful, a lot of people think that when you put zero into this, the whole thing's going to become zero, but actually that's not quite the case in a lot of times, especially when you get to P3 and P4, or P4, yes. So you put zero into here, this will become zero, this will become zero because you've got these x's multiplying, so it'll be zero multiplied by the whole thing, but here you'll have four e to the power of zero, now e to the power of zero is one, so you'll be left with just a four here, so you've got to be careful about that, okay, you've got to be very careful about that. Okay, because you have 4 e to the power of 0, which is 4. So let's just tidy up these. This is going to give you 2 times two times 16. Now, we can't really do much with this, so I'll leave it as lin 2 squared. It's not the same as lin 2 squared, where the squared is just for the 2. It's the whole thing is squared. And this is going to be minus 8 times lin 2 times... You have now e to the power of... That's going to be 2 lin 2, which is e to the power of lin 4. 2 lin 2, which is e to the power of lin 4, because a half times 4 is 2, and then you use a power rule. And you'll have plus 4 e to the power of, again, lin 4, because you're going to have, again, a half times 4 is 2, and you have uh, lin 2 to the power of 2, which is lin 4, minus 4. Okay, now, what we should realize is e to the power of lin 4 is equal to 4 e to the power of lin 4 is equal to 4, because these are basically inverses of each other. So if you put a function inside its inverse, they cancel each other out and leave you with what's in the, in the bracket, basically. Um, just in case you're not sure, I'll just do a little demonstration here for you to understand. Okay, let me say e to the power of lin 4. Let's say we call that y. I want to try to uh, solve this, you know, I want to find what um, the value of y is. So what I'll do is I'll take um, the lin of both sides. So I have lin e to the power of um, lin 4 equals lin y. And then I can use the power rule. I say lin 4 times lin e is equal to lin y. Now lin e is equal to 1. So we can say lin 4 is equal to lin y. Now, if lin 4 is equal to lin y, y must equal 4. Okay, it's just a little sort of proof to show you, but basically when you have a function composite with 
composite with its in inverse, not differential, inverse, okay, either way around, it will just give you whatever's input into the function, okay? And the lin and the exponential non the exponential function, they're both inverses of each other. All right, so that's why this is just going to become 2 times 16, which is 32. I can't do much with this, just leave it as lin 2 all squared. Now this is going to become uh, 4 times 8, this will become a 4, remember? I'll just write it here, 4 times 8 lin 2. And this will become 4 times 4 minus 4. So you have, you end up with 32 lin 2 squared minus uh, 4 eighths are, that's 2 times 6, 4 eighths are also 32 lin 2 and plus 16 minus 4 which is 12. And there we have our answer. They asked us to give it an exact form in terms of lin2. Okay, so find the exact value of the area of R, so in exact form and in terms of lin2, and that's what we've done here. And there we have the answer to that question.